So we also assume that we are going to call the set of vertices as the numbers 1 through n in such a way that the vertices are already sorted according to y. And we so that's ju just a matter of uh, renaming the vertices. Doesn't it's without loss of generality. And also, we might multiply every entry of y by some fixed constant so that we have this property that the first entry is squared and the last entry is squared sum up to one. Okay, so having done all this preparation. Here is how we're going to show that there exists a threshold t such that separating the vertices according to y that are bigger than t or smaller than t according to y will give us a desired expansion. So how do we prove that such a t exists? We pick it at random, and then we'll show that the desired property must happen with positive probability. This is actually not necessarily the quickest proof of uh, this statement, but it will be useful to go through the proof in this language because then when later we look at uh, other approximation algorithms for uh, expansion and conductance and sparse cut, they will be easier to relate to what we are doing now. So we are going to pick t at random. How do we pick it? Well, we are going to sh need a slightly complicated distribution. So we are going to pick it in such a way that if you're looking at some uh, positive interval, say from uh, A to B, and you're going to ask what's the probability that the threshold T is going to fall between A and B, this will be, we want this to be B squared minus A squared. We also want the definition to be such that if you're looking at an interval CD of uh, negative numbers, the probability of the threshold falling in between here is going to be c squared minus d squared. And if you think for a moment about what definition will give you these properties, it's that you can pick t to have this density function, so that the probability of being in an interval will be this integral. When a and b are positive, this is just uh, 2 times z, so its integral will be z squared. And when it's negative, it will be minus 2z, so the integral will be minus z squared, and then it works out to what we want. But why do we want this property? Well, maybe the next calculation will make it clear. It will also make clear why we picked the vector y to have median 0. So let's look at the cut that is induced by first picking a threshold t according to this distribution and then separating the vertices in this way. Let's call st the smaller of uh, the two sides of the cut. Well then, st will always be of size at most n over 2, but then here is the first non-trivial observation. How big is st going to be? On average, it's going to be exactly the summation over v of y v square. So notice this is going to go into the denominator of the expansion of st. This is going into the denominator of uh, the Rayleigh quotient of y. So we're sort of working in the right direction of relating, at least on average, the expansion of uh, this random set with the Rayleigh quotient of y. Okay, so why is this identity true? Well, we can uh, we can write the cardinality of uh, st as the summation over v of uh, an indicator random variable iv, which is going to be 1 if v is in the small side of the cut, and it's going to be 0 otherwise. So then the expectation of uh, the size of st is going to be the summation over v of the expectation of uh, these 0, 1 random variables. Or, which is the same, it's going to be the summation over v of uh, the probability that v is in uh, this set. And what is the probability that a vertex v is in this set? 
so a vertex V will be uh, mapped to some value yv by the um, eigenvector. Let's say that yv is positive. The way we constructed y, y n over 2 is going to be 0. Now let's say that the threshold happens to come here. Then one side of the cut will be all the vertices on uh, this side and one side of the cut is going to be all the vertices on uh, this side. But this side of the cut is going to be the bigger one. And so yv is not going to be in uh, st. Now suppose that the threshold comes here. Then this is going to be the large side of the cut. And again yv is not going to belong to the small side of the cut. So the only way yv can belong to the small side of the cut is when the threshold falls between 0 and yv. But what's the probability that the threshold falls between 0 and some positive value? Well, it's going to be the square of that positive value. That's really why we were doing the definition in this way. It's going to be yv square. And now what happens if uh, yv is negative? Pretty much the same argument, just mirrored on uh, the negative side of the real line. So either way, this is going to be the summation over v of uh, yv squared, which is what we wanted. Now the part of the argument that will be a little bit more complicated is what's, at least on average, the number of edges that are cut by picking a threshold randomly with the probability that I just described and then defining two sets in this way. So by a similar argument, we can write it as a summation over edges of uh, the expectation of the indicator random variable that tells you whether the edge is cut, which is the same as summing over all edges, the probability that the edge is cut. Now this probability can be upper bounded like this, which is maybe the trickiest uh, part of the argument. So let's see why this is true. We're going to look at a few cases. So let's say 0 is here, and that yu and yv are here. Now for yu and yv to be separated by the cut, the threshold has to come in the middle of them. Because if the threshold comes left of yu, then both yu and yv will be in the same set. The edge will not be cut. And if the threshold is bigger than yv, Again, yu and yv will be on the same side of the cut. The only way for yu to be on one side of the cut and yv to be on the other side of the cut is for the threshold to be between yu and yv. So this will happen with probability yv square minus yu square, and that's yv minus yu times uh, yv plus yu which is what we have here. All those quantities are uh, positive. Now, if you have the same, but with yu and yv reversed, so here also we will have yu squared minus yv squared. So here again, this thing will be reversed, but it will be the same as having the absolute value without being reversed. So this is still valid. So let's see another case. Suppose that yv and yu are both negative, well then here, by the same reasoning, the threshold has to come between yv and yu in order to separate them. This happens with uh, this probability. Now those quantities are both negative. Here with the absolute values we switch the sign of both. And so this is still equal to what we have here. At least so far we are getting actual equalities, not inequalities. The next case will be the one where we have an, in, an inequality instead of uh, an actual identity. Suppose we are in this situation, so then t will have to come in between here. What is the probability of uh, t falling into this interval? Well, we need to compute it separately for the positive part of the interval and the negative part of the interval. 
and the total probability will be y u square for the interval from y u to 0 plus y v square for the interval from 0 to y v. Well, this is at most y u plus y v squared because this will contain the squares and also twice the product. And now this is actually the same as this. Because since y u and y v have different signs, if we subtract one from the other, we're actually summing them in uh, absolute, we're actually summing their absolute values. And the absolute value here controls the sign. So that should be the case where this works as a strict inequality. So this was the trickiest part of the argument. So we have this inequality. One way to think about it is that when yu and yv are close, they are less likely to be cut by the fact that we pick a random threshold. And this is just to account for the fact that we don't have a uniform distribution of the threshold. And we had to not have a uniform distribution of the thresholds because otherwise we would have had trouble controlling the denominator of uh, the expression for the expansion, the size of the set.